So I'm looking at this person behind him thinking, like, who the hell is that? Like, I'm trying to go into the dressing room in my head and going, like, who, who built, who's got that kind of hair? And I finally walk out around and I look and, and Meltzer turns and goes, oh, hey, Shane. And I knew who he was, but I was like, what the hell's he doing standing in line for a paycheck? <laughs> First off, the industry newsletter, specifically the Wrestling Observer, deserves some credit for actually getting ECW on the map in the first place. So uh, I believe that Eddie Gilbert was the one who had the in with Dave Meltzer, started sending in the results, and that sort of raised ECW's profile. And Todd Gordon told me uh, recently that that was actually one of his goals when he started ECW, was to start getting noticed by the industry inside of newsletters. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, more specifically, did Wade Keller do anything for ECW or or against ECW in your mind, as far as his writing goes? Uh, I wasn't a big reader of the sheets. You know, typically in the wrestling dressing room, you'd hear, uh, hey, did you see what Meltzer wrote? Or did you see what Wade Keller wrote? Uh, uh, his was called The Torch, I believe. Yeah, um, yeah. Pro Wrestling Torch, PW and, Torch, yeah. Pro Wrestling Torch, yes. Uh, they, they, like anything in life, there's a yin and a yang, right? There's you know very few things that are just all good or all bad. Um, you know, so, and Bob Ryder, another one I think we have to put in the, into that caption with with Meltzer and Keller and, and all the other writers. Uh, like Bruce Mitchell, uh, I think, was one at the time. Mitchell, right. Uh, yeah. Then uh, uh, Dave, uh, what was Dave's name from Philadelphia? Um, I, I apologize to the guys. I'm just so bad. I always have been bad at names. Anyway, uh, you know, if the sheets are going to give you the, the, the exposure, then you, you shouldn't be too – you know, put off if they hold you accountable in some ways and, and criticize where I think the problem comes in, at least in my, from my perspective, I would never go on and say, uh, what the hell does LeBron James know? He's wrong about foot basketball. I think this, uh, LeBron James probably has a little bit better acumen in, in, in basketball than I have. Uh, but I would dare say my acumen is probably a bit better in professional wrestling than LeBron James's is. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it's that yin and yang. Bob Ryder, by the way, w- was another. I would watch Bob Ryder and how he did this, you know, again, with his, techno- his instant technologies that we have today is like uh, so archaic. But he would sit there watching the matches and in real time type the matches out. And I would think you know, my initial watching him doing this was, okay, he's typing this out. He's approximating what he's watching because it's going so fast, the action. Then I would later go back and start reading like what he wrote about my match and looking at it and going, well, that's pretty damn close to what we did. Uh, but that instant getting communication out and getting it out to the world. And as we now know, didn't know at the time, but the the tape trading that was so pervasive around, we we had heard of the tape trading and I might be honest, my thought was, okay, there's a couple hundred people out there trading tapes someplace. Uh, now a lot more ubiquitous than we, than we would have realized at the time. And that was, I think, ECW's Achilles heels. We didn't have a way to put finger on pulse and get real time. Like Vince McMahon can probably tell you right now how many tickets to the seat are sold for whatever particular venue. Uh, we had no way of doing that. Uh, but with the sheets, back to the sheets and, and and the ways of disseminating the information back then, you know, something as small as ECW in this little bingo hall in Philadelphia was not going to be covered by a CNN or a Fox News or a, even a, maybe a major local Philadelphia news station. But Paul and, and Todd early on would have me doing an awful lot of radio interviews in those places. So, you you, you know, you'd, you'd get the word out that way. Uh, the sheets, I think, were primarily responsible for getting word out about that. And you'd said uh, about Eddie Gilbert. I know for a fact later, Todd or uh, Paul Heyman was also very tight. The night that uh, with with, uh, with uh, uh, Dave Meltzer, uh, the night that Lance Storm, we had spoken about before we got on the air. Uh, uh, the night that Lance debuted and hit a home run, we were in the line at the end of the night and I was, I'd never met him before. So we're talking in line, waiting for our checks. And there's somebody in front of me, a shorter guy with a black leather jacket and dark curly hair. So I'm looking at this person behind him thinking like, who the hell is that? Like I'm trying to go into the dressing room. I had and going like, who, who built, who's got that kind of hair. And I finally walk out around and I look and, and Meltzer turns and goes, hey, Shane. And I knew who he was, but I was like, what the hell's he doing standing in line for a paycheck, right? Uh, you know, so we we were quite aware early on that po- probably both Paul and Eddie and Todd were all getting that out. And and it's, again, a, a necessary thing. It's not a good thing or a bad thing. It was a necessary thing to get the word out about ECW uh, and to push it as much as we could. The, you know, the problem is I, I think it's disingenuous when you say, well, Keller said something he shouldn't have said or Meltzer printed something that we wish he hadn't printed. Uh, I'm a firm believer that be held to this, be held to the same account. 
You know, so like if you want them to talk good about your company, don't don't get, get all butt hurt when they say something bad about your company, especially if it's legit. Uh, learn from it. And and you know when I would do my interviews back then, uh, and had quite a few of them as as champion for ECW. The interviews, like you would often do, is there anything you don't want to talk about, anything you want to stay away from. And I've, I, I always say no, just th throw it out. You know, I, if I don't want to talk about it, I'll dance around it. And, and uh, but for me, taking on those questions, is wrestling real or is it fake? And is ECW different from these other companies? I could use those to hit grand slams. Because I it then became simple. Watch WWF, watch WCW, watch ECW, and tell me if you don't see a difference between the three. Uh, you know, and I, I would never come out and say wrestling, you know, ECW was real, but it, there were there would be these euphemisms that I would use that would butt right up to that. And so, like the same thing with the seats. You know, we have to be careful. Uh, a lot of the wrestlers, me included, at times, thinks that uh, you know, if if you want to talk to an authority about our business it's probably better to like if i want to talk to somebody that's an authority on on the this pittsburgh Steelers teams from the 70s terry bradshaw is probably going to be a better source of information than say some journalist out there uh, i'm not saying that the journalist can't be well read and well versed in that stuff but terry bradshaw was in that locker room terry bradshaw was on the field for that team and so you know i think a lot of the guys have you know some bitterness to that there's other guys out there that doing something that they hadn't thought of beforehand uh, but you know, and, and at times, quite honestly, maybe they're not qualified to speak on those things, but it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for, uh, reverse or undermine what they're saying, you know? So it's, you know, if you want to live by the sword, die by the sword, if you want to live by, Hey, when they're saying Shane Douglas had a five-star match and I love the sheets. Now they say he had a zero-star match. Well, they suck. Uh, you know, it's, it's yin and yang. Mm -hmm.